guys, welcome back to another video. Um, today I am going to be bringing you all another Magician Tips video on um, basically how to improve your sleight of hand, how to uh, get better with the cards. Um, not like that. Um, but before I do, I just want to make a quick announcement that um, if you guys don't already know, a great place to learn some new magic is the Magic Net YouTube channel. Now, I um, have basically produced and founded... Um, basically Magic Net, which is like a group of small YouTubers who basically add their, uh, we add their videos to a specific playlist, and that playlist has, you know, a lot of the content that people are looking for that the big channels don't have. So if you guys want to learn some more magic, some more awesome magic, um, go ahead and check out the Magic Net YouTube channel. There will be a link in the description, or you can check it out on our featured channel. So, um, let me get into the first tip, which is number one. Use your family. So, what do I mean by use your family? Well, perform to them. Uh, they're your, they are practice people. They're people who will watch your magic, and uh, you will not be looked down upon by them. And it's not their first time they've seen you, so they know, they know either what you're capable of or not capable of. So they'll be able to help you out a lot. So, if you um, have access to people who you know. Uh, would like this sort of thing, be sure to perform to them, but there's a specific way you need to do this. Don't walk up like, hey, can I show you a magic trick and act all slick and sly or whatnot. You want to come to them um, in a way that kind of makes it seem like, you know, you're just practicing on them. And that's what I like to do simply because it kind of prepares them to know, hey, I'm not 100% on this yet. Um, I might be a little bit rusty, if you know what I mean. Um, but, you know, so just make sure... Uh, that you use the people around you to your benefit because it really will help you out. Uh, my family has been a big help to me because they give me constant feedback on, um, you know, oh, uh, just improve that a little bit, uh, improve your angle there, which is going to lead me directly into my next point, which is use mirrors. Mirrors are so key um, simply because you have to, have to, have to, have to know your angles. Um, if you don't know your angles, um, you're not going to be able to perform very well for people because it's going to be really obvious what you're doing. Um, so make sure you use the mirror as well to your advantage. Um, a lot of people, if you don't have a mirror, just again use your family members. Um, but I, I prefer using a mirror simply because I kind of, you know, I've done magic for a while now, so I kind of know what works, what doesn't. Um, but if you are able to... Um, use a mirror, and obviously there are things you need to, like, there are things that you can work on, um, without other people, for example, um, or without the use of a mirror. It's not essential for magic, but it is, it is very key to learning, um, you know, how to get your angles right. I'm learning the diagonal palm shift right now. Um, very difficult move. It's, I really, I like it, but it's, it's hard to pull off. So, um, basically, Use your mirrors to your advantage. So, basically, um, there's one more point I want to cover, and then I'll go into a bonus point. Um, so this point is use misdirection to your advantage as well. You have so many key assets that you can use when you're performing. Um, for me, if I'm not very comfortable performing for someone, I try and perform for people who are in a busy environment. Like, um, loud, um, you know, like a lot of times at like fitness places. Um, there's like music going on and people's attention won't be solely focused on your hands. Um, which, you know, kind of seems like a little bit of cheating going on there. But if you, if you truly, um, you know, want to get better, I suggest you start out in the places that are a little bit louder, more, uh, more things that you can get distracted on, simply because it helps your misdirection out. Um, and it, it just, it overall makes the effect a bit better, because, you know, the spectator is not looking directly at your hands 100% of the time. So, um, yeah, that's that's pretty key. So, um, my last tip for you guys on improving your sleight of hand magic in general is to understand misdirection. So many people think it's like, oh, there's a bird, and and then people look away, and you're just like, ha I did the pass. So, um, you don't want to do that. You want to make it less obvious, I guess, um, which I would say, you know, if you can, you can actually use misdirection just by looking up at them or by calling their name. Um, those things draw their attention away. And a lot of times it's subconscious, like, um, J-Doc has fooled me with tricks simply because he says Luke, and I'm just like, yo, what up? Um, and then, you know, I get distracted, and it's like, oh, uh, he just did something. 
Um, and then you know, if you know how to use it to your advantage, you're gonna be you're gonna have so much uh, more powerful magic. It's gonna be way better. Um, it's not gonna be you know uh, really shifty movements. Um, so if, let me let me expound upon expand expound whatever. Um, let me expand on how to use misdirection. So let's say I'm gonna use the example um, of a pass. So let's say I'm doing um, this pass. So here's the five of diamonds. Square up the deck, and then I pass the card back to the top. Um, let's say I'm doing that, and I need I need to adequately um, cover my pass. Because let's say you know I'm not feeling 100% right now, um, and I could drop the cards. I need to make sure I have good misdirection. So um, you want to focus on performing your sleight of hand smoothly. That is my last tip for you guys. Um, if you focus on performing smoothly more, rather than quickly, um, your performances will be so much better. Um, and this kind of ties into the misdirection tip. Um, if you understand misdirection, you'll understand that having a smooth move, instead of making your passes look like, I don't, I'm not, like, instead of making your passes, like, you know, really choppy, um, you want to make sure they're smooth. So let me show what I mean. I can do this. I seriously can do that right in front of someone. And it, it's just, you know, as I'm talking, I'll say, so, um, uh, we'll lose your card. Uh, back in the pack, just like this, and then I close, and I bring my hand away. So it's just, you have to understand how to use misdirection, you have to understand how to mess with um, what they think. Right now they think you're done controlling the card, you just put it in the deck. You look up at them, bang, I got the card passed to the top. It's so, so easy. Now, let's say you're doing the double undercut. There is misdirection you can use for this, and that's simply by walking. Um, if you walk away, if you, well not walk away, but if you... Um, you know, reposition your spectator, or like, a lot of times if I'm doing the double undercut, I'll say, okay, um, your card gets lost in the pack, then I move to their side, and I say, okay, check this. Um, or like, you know, I'll just muddle it with movement. I'm not even drawing attention, saying, okay, we'll go and give the cards a quick mix-up, just like this. Um, that's fairly obvious, and most people can follow that. You just want to, um, make sure you're smooth with your movements, and you're not... Um, you know, making blatantly obvious statements, like, you know, uh, like, a lot of people, I've seen someone do this, like, okay, the card goes in the middle, and watch, just like this, it gets back to the top, it's like, okay, that's so obvious, um, but let me explain this to you as well, um, making your movement smooth is so key, uh, if you, if you do, like, you know, just the double undercut while you're talking, David Blaine, he does that all the time. You can see it. On his performance on Ellen, he did the double undercut. I thought he was going to pass or something. Um, now, there are certain moves where it's, you know, you can pass in front of someone. I've done it. I do the face-up pass trick a lot. Um, just because that's a, that's a fun, you know, visual effect that takes, like, one second. It's really easy. Um, but also, like, you know, let's say you're doing um, Herman Pass. Um, if you need to, you you can do that undercover. It's not a move that you're supposed to do right in front of someone. But let's say you're doing, um, I don't know, uh, let's say you're doing this control where you say, uh, riffle down the deck, thank you very much, tell me to stop right here, alright, I'll show you your card. Eight of clubs, put it on top, and then it slides all the way down, back in the middle, just like so, no breaks, no what, and then bang, it's back on top. So all that is, just two cards, you slide them down, and it's really easy. I'm not going to explain it, but basically, you know, you can do that in front of them. You don't have to have a misdirection, you just have to be wise about how you use your misdirection. And guys, that is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Um, like I said earlier, go ahead and subscribe to MagicNet. Um, if you don't know what the deck this is, this is the Black Crown. Recently just got this deck from J-Dog. Thank you so much, my friend. Um, and, uh, yeah, guys, I will see you all in the next video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment down below, and I will see you. Bye-bye.